Hi all, this is Mark Wilbur from Tushua.com and I'm posting this video as a response to Steve Kaufman's video on how to improve your pronunciation. This is uh, a topic near and dear to my heart. I, uh, I taught English for seven years in Taiwan and for the last four years of that I was uh, uh, running a, the academic side of a school. I was uh, a partner in the school. I, uh, I was the main curriculum designer, or actually the only curriculum designer for a lot of it, and I also taught over a thousand students from, most of them from the very, very basic level where they didn't even know all the alphabet yet, and some of them up through a point where they were fairly comfortable readers using uh, um, Oxford bookworms or the uh, Cambridge Extensive Readers at the uh, the intermediate upper levels. I agree with most of what Steve said. In fact, uh, almost all of it. I think uh, listening and being able to tell the difference between sounds that you hear is absolutely essential. If you can't hear the difference between two sounds, you're never going to pronounce them, them clearly. Um, there, is, there is one area where I have a different point of view, though, that I'd like to share. And that is the importance of learning spelling patterns and and how English writing is connected to English speech. I personally think it's it's extremely useful. Uh, Steve's example of a person who's learning English pronouncing uh, W O R. I believe the word he used was word as ward because O R is an or sound. <clears throat> actually, kind of illustrates my point. Uh, w O R is a very common pattern that uh, I actually that I taught in the first few months of my students' classes, and it's pretty much always a whir sound, uh, like work or worm or worth or world or worthy. It's uh, it's it's a standard pattern, and there are a lot of patterns like this in English that native English speakers may not consciously be aware of. But when we see a word we don't know, we generally have a good idea of how to pronounce it. Now, I'm not saying it's a hundred percent. Obviously, there are a lot of uh, a lot of loan words from from other languages than, say, French or German that uh, English gets a lot of words from. And obviously, there there are exceptions, but it's uh, it's something that can save a lot of time if if you teach. A few patterns that come up again and again and again, and it can help students. Uh, in my opinion, it, it helps them get on the right track in terms of pronunciation faster. I I taught uh, uh, mostly little kids. Uh, I, I would say the average new student was nine years old. Some of them as young as uh, six or seven, and some of them a bit older. And one thing that I f I find great for students who are learning English is uh, Dr. Seuss. I, I liked Dr. Seuss when I was a kid, but most schools that are, are teaching English in Taiwan can't use Dr. Seuss because uh, they, I mean, they, they rely on learning each word one at a time and, and doing it through a, a kind of a brute force method, and students aren't that familiar with uh, phonics patterns. And there are a lot of there are a lot of made up words in them too. Like uh, one of my favorites when I was a kid was uh, one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. And in there, there's an imaginary animal called a wump that has like seven humps. It's like a super camel. And there's a yink that likes to uh, wink and drink ink, and the ink it likes to drink is pink. And uh, you know that's the kind of thing where if if a student has already learned that uh, you know ink sounds like ink and they they know that and they they see why ink they can guess that the animal is is a yink and if they haven't learned the word wink but they see this this animal drinking pink ink going like this and it says it likes to wink they often draw the you know make the connection and there i mean there there are a lot of uh, well, almost my whole YouTube channel at this point is about uh, is about spelling patterns, and I found it a huge help. You know, like uh, 
Steve and I have both learned Mandarin as adults. And one thing that uh, I think is, is a great thing to take advantage of if you are learning a Western language, like English, is uh, there is a phonetic connection. Maybe the, the connection in English isn't great. It's not like it is in Spanish where uh, you, you can learn the pretty much the entirety of the, uh, the uh, pronunciation rules really quickly, but it's still a whole lot better than Mandarin. It's, there's, there's still an awful lot you can get from getting a basic idea of how to pronounce words, and then from that, you know, it'll, it'll help you learn more words more quickly, especially if you're reading children's books. And then, after that, after you're at an intermediate level, then I would say exactly what Steve said, like you, you've got you to throw away the rule book at some point and just uh, go by how the people you know speak, or the people you're watching on TV or whatever. And in fact, I would say my students who did the very best at intermediate and more advanced level classes in terms of accent, were the ones that, that approached it kind of like acting. Like they would, uh, they would not only try to say the same, not only try to make the, the same sounds in terms of, you know, vowels and phonetics as whoever they were modeling, but they would try to talk in the same way with the same kind of inflections and the same, they would just try to be that person while they were speaking English. And, and those kids made great progress and some of my adult friends uh, were mostly English speakers learning Chinese or English speakers learning Japanese. Some of my adult friends that, that did very well in terms of accent also used that uh, method. So that's my two cents. Thanks for listening.